End of January, like the 30th or something? Nope, oh, 27th. Yeah, convoy is on the way to Ottawa. <laughs> See how that goes. Uh, so we're ready for drywall. The guys dropped it all off today. Massive piles of drywall all over the place here. Ceilings are done. Pot lights are cut in. Vapor barriers all done. I was wondering how the heck we were gonna do this against the walls. Um, you know, we just did this all conventional. So you, you wrap the, the poly over top of the wall and then your vapor barrier just comes down on, you know, on either side of the wall and you make the seal right there. So on the outside walls, I wasn't sure if we could do that. So I did a little experiment one day before I left and I just put a little glob of PL on the wall just to see because sometimes, you know, like solvents, they'll, they'll melt that foam. Like they'll, it'll just eat it away and there'll be nothing left. So I just wanted to make sure that PL wasn't going to do that. And, uh, and it didn't. So just wrap that poly down and P er, er, acoustic sealed it to the, uh, to the foam. And then the drywall will pin against that and it should make an air seal there. Uh, the way this worked out there behind that pink is just wood which is open to the outside basically except the the uh, stucco and stuff so yeah uh, I got this frame built for the tub so it'll just drop right inside there and the tap is gonna be at the back and the drain is gonna be at the back there actually hmm. I wonder if I hose myself with where I put those pipes. Those might have to move. Huh. Now that I'm looking at it. Hmm. Well, no big deal. So this guy will just drop right in there. It still sits on the floor, but it like it rests on there and on the floor. It should just, just fit in there. This is gonna be the shower area here. I didn't want, we've got one of those, we've got one of those rainfall shower heads, you know, like that hang from the ceiling and it just falls straight down. And I didn't really like the idea of that pipe being up in the attic. Like it would have been under the insulation and it should never have gotten cold. But I don't know, I just didn't, it didn't feel right to me. So I wanted to keep it on this side, like the warm side of the vapor barrier. So I decided just to build a little false ceiling in here underneath the actual ceiling and we'll run that pipe up through there and it just kind of basically replaces the the tub's position on the mixing valve so normally this is where your your tub would come out and your shower goes up <clears throat> we'll just have it go up also instead so we have a regular shower head and a rain shower head and i think this tap it just works as you turn it one way one comes on turn it the other way Actually, I think it's one or the other or both. I think that tap. I don't know. I don't know what can is, but <laughs> I guess I'll find out. Uh, what else is going on here? Oh, I stiffened this up. You know, I used to do it, and I know my kids are going to do it, but every time you walk around here, you're going to grab onto this and you're going to swing, right? And these pony walls are notorious for not being real strong so I wasn't sure how the heck I was gonna stiffen this up 
I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to need some sort of a metal bracket or some sort of a something to, to, to you know, take that play out. But what I ended up doing, super simple, I just cut a notch in the floor there, right beside one of the floor trusses. And I had to cut it deep here because I had to kind of put it in on an angle and then swing it in there. That's why the hole doesn't fit. But that goes down. And I just screwed that to the side of the floor truss here. I think I needed a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Yeah, to take up the space beside it. But yeah, that comes down here. And screwed on there. And that stiffens that right up. So between the, the plywood on there, that's, that's kind of carrying the stairs here. <clears throat> and uh, and that two by four, that's really strong. Like we're not gonna have, by the time we get drywall and stuff on there, it's gonna be good. So I think the next mission here, I picked up our fireplace yesterday. I've gotta find the instructions, figure out what this needs to be. Cause it's, I think it sits up about a foot off the floor or something. And then I've got a little bit of electrical to do in there. Oh, another thing I need to do. We've got these TV boxes. These are really neat. So these are how you rough these in for behind a TV. That way your power and everything stays like inside the wall. You don't have cords poking out here behind your TV. And then everything stays nice and clean. And I ran these conduits here. Uh, for running cabling and stuff inside the wall. And Mama Bear wants one right here. So when she's laying in the tub, she can watch TV. <laughs> That'll be kind of nice, I guess. So I gotta do that yet. Get this thing framed up, figure out what it needs to be. And then I'm gonna get drywalling this weekend. Be a few days, eh, probably a week or so, a week and a half of drywalling, and this place will look like a house, not like sticks anymore. Pretty exciting. And then uh, cabinets, they're sitting at the store ready, ready to be picked up. That's one thing that hasn't been delayed is our, our uh, cabinetry. They've actually been hounding us to pick it up. <laughs> so yeah, good to work.
So we got going on drywall yesterday. Didn't get a whole lot done, but got some of these exterior walls all covered up. <laughs> this was my first day with a roto zip. I made a mess. <laughs> I'm getting better though. These holes are a lot cleaner. Those guys make it look easy, but <laughs> just like everything else, there's an act to it. So, yeah, just gonna keep going today. Oh, it ended up a little funny, again, because our walls were a little bit taller than nine feet. So we got a little bit of a space to fill there. I think I'll just get some plywood or OSB or something. Something I have kicking around here just to fill up that gap. And it'll be kind of nice anyway, because it'll have like a nice spot to nail the baseboards everywhere, right? We have that anyway, I guess, at the bottom because of these double plates, but it's good. Uh, what else did we do? We've got this fireplace venting out into the attic anyway. It's kind of slick how that stuff works. It's like a double wall. There's a four inch inside a seven inch. And I'll kind of show you that over here, actually. There's this little adapter piece. So the four inch is the exhaust gas and the, and the seven inch on the outside is the fresh air coming in. And this piece adapts from that flex pipe to this rigid pipe, which goes up through the roof. And then here's the, here's the cap. I guess it's the, the air in and the exhaust out all in one. I'm not sure how that works. Oh, I see. Fresh air goes in here. And then there, and the exhaust comes out here. That's cool. Neat. So yeah, I've got a mountain of drywall to install here. Dad and Adam are coming by today. So we should get a ton of work done. Three of us should be able to bang up a lot of board. So yeah, get to work. And again back at the house basically got the drywall finished up a couple little odds and ends left I got to do the stairwell and I gotta do a little bit in the bathroom this will be that green board stuff you know that water resistant I think when the, the when the guys came and counted up some guys came and figured it all out ordered it <clears throat> they i guess they lots of guys don't use that anymore it must be cheaper to put on regular board and then paint it with some sort of coating or something that's what the guys were saying but i think i'd still rather just use the the water resistant stuff and be done with it so this will be you know this whole thing will be a shower so we're going to use it all through here still going to use that uh if you i don't know if you've ever seen that stuff it's that schluter that orange stuff that you put behind tile and they've got little floor pan systems they've got like whole kits that you use everything makes everything waterproof 
And I think going around here, we're just gonna do, do normal stuff. It's no big deal. You know, shouldn't be too much splashing around the tub. So a couple little pieces of drywall left here, but I'm basically done. Spent the night the other day, the other night cleaning everything up because it was a mess in here. I basically did two weeks of work without cleaning anything. Uh, the guys, our garage doors finally showed up too. A few weeks too late, to be honest, because we had a, a hell of a mess. I'll take you outside actually and show you. But garage doors finally came and we've got these high lift openers. So they go kind of up as high as they can first and then turn back so they don't come out as far into the garage even when they're open. So when we put our lighting up here, even if the door is open, the lights will still work. And these are kind of neat. I've never, I've never seen this before and I didn't know we had these. But there's this lock system here that uh, when the door is closed, this little solenoid pushes out and pushes this pin here, which stops it from being able to open. Um, we'll go outside the other way. Holy smokes. It's been a really strange winter. We have, we've had, uh, it was five degrees Celsius. So well above freezing, everything was melting. And now today it's minus 20 again. So everything gets all wet and full of water and then freezes again. So when the door guys came, they, <laughs> I knew they'd have to bring a big trailer in here with all the doors and all the operators and stuff. So I got the snowblower out and I blew a big path in here. This actually melted down probably about a foot. This was up, this was probably up another foot higher. They had this all blown out for those guys. And uh, they came the first day, they installed the doors and the tracks. And they were gonna come back the following day and uh, finish up all the openers and the operators and stuff. And I got a call from their boss at about 11 o'clock and he said, yeah, the guys tried to come out and it, uh, they got stuck, we had to call a tow truck. So overnight, it didn't snow, but the wind had blown the snow up against the ledges again. So the guys, he, he even had a pretty big truck. He had kind of a lifted three quarter ton. And he still got hung up there, so I had to get the tractor out again and uh, blow all that snow out for him. And uh, yeah, so because, oh yeah, right, because those guys, those doors were so late, I'll show you here what the heck happened. Oh man, it was brutal. But that is west. Now, we had a really bad blizzard and the wind was blowing straight from the west. Now I had all this poly here over the door openings. I tried to cover them up because I knew this storm was coming, but this isn't snow. <laughs> this is insulation up here, but man, we had a little sprinkling of snow all through the attic here and the close and, and up at this edge, it was actually kind of bad. Like it was about an inch or inch and a quarter of snow and there was nothing we could do about it. I mean, I, I brought the leaf blower up here and tried to blow it out. But I think all I did is I blew the snow, the snow down. So I figured we're better just to leave it and kind of let it do its thing. But obviously we ended up with some water coming in. So I pulled a couple of sheets of ply or drywall off and poked some holes in the poly and just sort of let it run to the low spots. I mean, this, you know, it's not that bad really, I guess in the end, but still it's not something you want. So yeah. So today, a few more sheets of drywall to do. These I left off just because I wanted to let the water drip out of there. Now everything's frozen again, so I don't know if I should finish that or not. I should probably leave those off. Maybe just work on the stairwell over here. 
Well, we'll get this all. I'm gonna. I wanna. I haven't glued this all together yet. This is that piece that it's here to stiffen up the wall. So I'm gonna glue. It's all screwed together, but I want to glue and screw that. And we'll we build some sort of a platform here. I've also got to finish up. Uh, figure out what we're gonna do here for between the stairs. I think we'll probably just build a little, you know, a railing height wall that comes down. Yeah, nothing fancy. We'll go with that. So, lots to do. Get cracking. going on in the house we are drywalled and waiting for the mutters and tapers to start there's our dining room there's the main room it's our living room fireplace and this will be the kitchen so we'll have we'll have here's my finger Oven, double wall oven here, countertop, my gas cooktop, come around, there'll be a little prep sink here. No, here, prep sink here, then our dishwasher, microwave, and then the big island where the plumbing is that coming out of the floor. That'll be my sink here. Bryden's sitting on the island right now. And then our fridge freezer. <laughs> That'll be our little kitchenette. And then the office. And then that's to go downstairs, obviously. We've got our master bedroom here. And then into our ensuite. This is our walk in closet. Toilet room, shower, my fancy tub. It has bubbles, jets, a heater, light therapy. We're gonna hang a TV <laughs> for my tub. Yeah. <laughs> Our double sinks with the cabinetry. And then this way we have laundry room, another bathroom. Tub, double sinks, toilet, and then two kids' bedrooms. Oh, a closet. Bedroom, bedroom. They're identical with walk in closets. Yeah, downstairs, nothing much is new. Aaron's wiring my tub <laughs> today. Hi, Garter. I guess I forgot to show the back entrance to the garage. So there's a pocket door here because that'll close off this area. And that's our pantry. And then another toilet room, just a toilet and a sink. And then a walk-in coat closet, boot closet, whatever. Got some lockers here. And this is to the garage. door to the front step, a nice concrete step, and we finally have garage doors, that is new, <laughs> god, what a saga, took seven months to get them here, had snow up in the attic how many times, but they're finally installed, <laughs> thank god, eating again Carter, <laughs> <laughs> 